our tutorial how to regressive integrate moving average models. Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average, or RMA models, consist of specifying conditional mean of a process. They are stochastic or random models specified as some of the deterministic simple or multiple linear relationships with lag level or differentiated dependent or explained variables, stochastic or random simple or multiple nonlinear relationships with lag level or differentiated model errors, and a constant mean or drift. This topic is part of advanced forecasting models with our curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse Curriculum by clicking the link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. An example of RMA models is differentiated first order autoregressive model, which consists of difference forecast equal to deterministic simple linear relationship with previous period data difference plus a constant drift. Its RMA notation has one autoregressive order, one order of differentiation or integration, and zero moving average order. Notice that this RMA is with a constant. As a formula, current period forecast is equal to a constant drift plus previous periods data, plus an autoregressive coefficient multiplied by the difference between previous periods minus second previous periods data. Great, so let's go into our studio so that we can study differentiated first order autoregressive model with greater detail. Excellent, so here we are within our studio. The first step within the tutorial is to load its package. This is done with library function and for the tutorial we'll be using forecast. So we, use, we select that code line there, we click run or control enter on the keyboard. The next step is we need to create the data objects for this tutorial. We'll be doing so through data reading. So first we create this data object which is equal to read.csv and within it we have the name of the data file, RMA models data as a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values comma header equals to true. So we select that code line there, click run or control enter on the keyboard, and that created a data object stored within the global environment as a data frame. So if we click on the spreadsheet kind of icon, that opens the data for us, and we have two columns of data. First dates, and then SPY adjusted. SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index. Adjusted because this includes adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. So here we have data with the daily frequency from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2015, therefore nine years of data. So going back into the code file, the next step is we're going to convert that data into time series type of object. That is done by creating this object named SPY, which is equal to TS, that's the function for creating that time series object, and from data we're going to select the second column, the one that included those adjusted close prices, comma frequency equals to 21. So within this tutorial, we'll be assuming that the data has a monthly frequency, because we have daily data on a business calendar and approximating that monthly frequency as 21 days. Notice that this frequency is only included for educational purposes and can be modified according to your needs. So we select that code line, click run or control enter on the keyboard. So once we created our data object, the next step is we're going to delimit training and testing ranges. Training range is commonly used for optimal parameters estimation and testing range is commonly used for forecasting accuracy evaluation. So we create these two new objects, SPYT, for training range, SPYF for testing range, and we'll be using window function for both of them, and for the original SPY, the one we created above, the training range is going to end, and here we have month 84, it's observation number 19. And for the testing range, it's going to start at that same month 84, observation 20. Notice here that what we're doing is, for the training range, it's going to be the first seven years of data, and for the testing range, it's going to be the last two years of data. Notice that this training and testing range is delimiting also was only included for educational purposes, therefore can be modified according to your needs. So we select those two code lines, click run or control enter on the keyboard.
Excellent. So now that we've finished doing our training and testing ranges delimiting, we can continue to study the ARMA models. Specifically, within this tutorial, we'll be studying the differentiated first order autoregressive with its corresponding ARMA notation, one autoregressive order, one order of integration or differentiation, zero moving average order, and C because it includes a constant drift. So we do the calculation and notice that the corresponding optimal parameters estimation for this model is done within the training range. So we create this variable name DAR for differentiated first order autoregressive 1, T because we're doing this within the training range as mentioned. And the function we'll be using is ARMA with capital A. The data, SPYT, which is training range data, the order for this ARMA model, as we can see here, C with columns, it's going to be 1, 1, 0, comma, include a constant equals to true. And the next step is we're going to visualize within the chart a forecast of the previously estimated model, the DAR1T, and H, which is the number of steps for which we're going to do this multi-step forecast, is going to be 504, which is the number of observations within the testing range. Notice here that the title is going to be differentiated first order autoregressive with its ARMA notation, and then we have vertical or y-axis label price, horizontal or x-axis label month. And last, we're going to compare that corresponding forecast with the actual data from the testing range. So we're going to add with lines SPYF, which is testing range data, with LTY equals to 3, so that we have a dashed line. Excellent. So let's go ahead and select these three code lines and click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard. Excellent. So here we have the chart with us. Let's go ahead and zoom into it. As mentioned previously, we have the differentiated first order autoregressive R model with its corresponding notation. On the vertical axis, we have prices. On the horizontal one, we have months. The solid black line corresponds to that training range data. And notice something very important here. The solid blue line, and that's the corresponding multi-step forecast which was done at the beginning of the testing range for the full testing range in advance, therefore using the parameters estimated within this training range, not re-estimating those parameters. And as mentioned previously, this forecast is done at the beginning of the testing range for the full testing range in advance, therefore it's not using any of the testing range data. Then it has its corresponding confidence intervals, and we can compare that forecast with the actual data, which is the dashed black line on the back. Excellent. So we're going to close this chart here. And now that we've finished studying differentiated first order autoregressive model, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please, pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.